been about two weeks since we've done it. Blue 74, I think. I don't think I was out there last weekend. Gearhead, the young gearhead was asking uh, to make sure that I show the starts and the setting and all that sort of stuff. I have something interesting that he might not know about either, but uh, uh, we'll see what happens. Doesn't sound like it's set, but I felt it go. This car almost never does that. I'll show you this in a sec here. I may have shown this before, but I'm not sure if it actually made it into a video because I do a lot of videos in this car that don't ever go anywhere. This calls itself a fuel saver gauge. Really, it's just a vacuum gauge. And the higher the vacuum, well, Essentially, the higher the vacuum, the better economy, the better fuel mileage and all that sort of stuff. I'm not going to rev it right now because I, I want it to uh, get warm and then we'll, uh, then we'll close the choke. But uh, I can watch this. You see the way the needle is like quite solid? That's good. If it were bouncing around too much, especially if it was bouncing between the, uh, the excellent and the good range or whatever, you can tell the engine's going to stall. If, if this is too uh, dynamic, you can tell the engine's not happy, or not pulling a full vacuum, a complete vacuum, right? So, this here, if we were in gear and driving and it was in excellent mode there, I would be shocked. Obviously, the more that you have the throttle open, the less vacuum that you have, because it leaks out. Um, you know, it gets consumed by the engine, right? So, yeah, I wasn't sure how much I've shown that before. Um, we also have a big one of these in the Studebaker. That was more of a floor-mounted one. This is an under-dash one, but uh, um, I really I, I rely on it a lot. Like when uh, in the cold, when this car isn't quite as happy, I'm talking like you know in the in the, in the middle of winter, it has to warm up more. Uh, this uh, this this gauge gets a little uh, it looks a little funky, and you can see it uh, you know kind of dropping into the 15 or even to the 12 thing. And uh, if you leave it and don't uh, do something about it, it'll it'll stall. So. Uh, yeah, for gearhead there, I thought I'd show him that. That's uh, something totally not required anymore. Uh, probably there's a vacuum sensor or something that would put the engine light on if uh, if something were fuckered there, but uh, this is how you used to do it in the analog days. Yeah, so that's that. Kind of a funny... Uh funny little effect there. I, I really had, haven't had to crank this car that much. I didn't have to crank it that much when it had been sitting for two and a half years. So uh, I don't think uh, maybe the linkage is getting weak in there or something. I don't think it was actually setting the choke on the first two uh, attempts there. Because notice on the third attempt it, it, it went right as it should do. And that vacuum strength is actually gaining a little bit here as the engine warms up and as it uh, stays with the choke closed. Pretty normal. Ow! God damn it! Ow, Jesus Christ! Fuck! It's not a super hot day, but the sun has been shining on those for four or five hours now, probably. I had a dream about this car the other night, and. Uh, it wasn't a pleasant dream because we really need to get this shit back on the, the horn center and um, I need to pull the dash again. There's a wire at the back of the windshield or the um, windshield wiper switch that has fallen off or last time I was in the dash it must have pulled off the back. Um, I gotta put the uh, speedometer um, and odometer cable back on. about it I think. The last time I had dropped the uh, steering column it didn't quite go back in exactly the right position and the uh, neutral safety switch was keeping the car from starting. So it's like a very, you gotta you gotta kind of work it until you get it back into its position there. What worries me about that a little bit is sometimes you can actually start it and drive 
if the uh, neutral safety switch orientation or whatever isn't proper. So that's that would be nice. I had that on the truck one time when it was here. Uh, well, because it had no, there was no neutral safety switch, and it had a ratchet shifter, uh, K and M, B and M, B and M, uh, with a golf ball style ratchet. So. Um, yeah, I was totally in gear when I started it, and then I, when I was revving it up, I heard this, and there was a, the rear tires like spinning in the grass, like burning the grass. You could see the smoke on it. It's like, oh Jesus! Temperature's up good, so. Uh, oh. So it dropped back to about twenty-two. I'm gonna say. Pretty good. That is in inches of mercury, which is a pretty common standard for vacuum. Now it probably uses some kind of kilopascal thing or whatever, but I also have a, a vacuum gauge, you know, a portable one that you put, you know, you tee off a vacuum line or you pull out a vacuum line off the uh, manifold and uh, hook into it. I think uh, vacuum gauges are wonderful, uh, just like a compression te a compression tester and a vacuum gauge will tell you almost everything you need to know about the health of an engine. Because um, if one of those is whack, you, you you will have to fix that before you go forward with anything else, you know. Uh, vacuum gauge is a little bit more useful on a real-time list like this. Um, but once you see it's solid, there's no there's not much point fucking around with it. I see uh, it drops down to, it's in gear and has a load, drops down to about 18 from the 22. Exactly. And as I give her, the more I open the throttle, the more that goes down. I mean, it can go down to almost zero. The Studebaker has almost no fucking, because the, the can is so wild, right? Uh, so when you're at low speeds, you, you don't have any power brakes because there's not enough vacuum to maintain it. So I need to put a canister in there or some way to uh, store a vacuum. Is that, is that the right thing? Not really, but you know what I mean. So you can, so you can you keep residual vacuum. Um, yeah, because coming up on the end of the driveway here or whatever, if I'm in the Sudebaker, like there's almost no stopping power. But if you're moving a lot, you're generating some vacuum. You, uh, then the brakes work like a motherfucker. They almost lock up. So it's like kind of on the extreme. Summertime, the visibility fucking bites here. The foliage comes up, and then I can't see shit. In the wintertime, you know, obviously the greenery goes back and you can see further. 